These are my tools for making great PS2 tutorials. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Proud to Phoenix Media. In today's video game tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use OPL 0.9.3 on your modded PS2, fat or slim, mod chip, or free McBoot, and show you how to do the network method for Windows 10 PCs. Same idea applies to Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 7, and probably below as well. Um, for whatever reason, sometimes gamers get tripped up on the network settings. So even though I've made a lot of other tutorials about network settings in the past with older versions of OPL, I just want to revisit this one more time and maybe take um, a much simp simpler approach in explaining this. And hopefully this will help you guys out. So let's do this. First thing you want to do is let's get the file structure set up on your PC correctly. So it doesn't matter if it's FAT32 or NTFS hard drive when you store your games, OPL doesn't care. So on my desktop, I made a folder called basically PS2 SMB. Inside this folder, I made another folder subdirectory called DVD. Inside here, I just dumped my ISO games that are about four gigabytes. So here I have one game as a test, Berserk JPN edition. So I have it right here. And then if you want to make other folders, by all means go ahead. So like if you had a CD folder, you could dump your CD ISO games in here. If you have game files that are larger than four gigabytes for the DVD folder, what you could do is you could um, rip them using USB util or USB extreme and dump it right here. In the event your PS2 cannot read those larger than four gigabyte files in the DVD folder. It's just another troubleshooting tip, uh, step. Okay, so now what you wanna do is let's go ahead and set up some of the sharing properties. So you right click the folder, go to properties, go to sharing tab, under share, it doesn't hurt, I'm gonna remove this, this permission here, but let's add a new person here, call it guest and say add. Permission level doesn't hurt to say read and write and say share, and then you're good to go. Under advanced sharing, what I'm going to do is you click on share this folder. You should already have a name here. If not, go ahead and add a name, PS2 SMB, basically. And then go to permissions, and then under everyone, it doesn't hurt to say full control. And then you can say OK, apply, OK, and close. So that's one item there, sharing the folder properly. Now let's go ahead and check out some other things on my computer to make sure that there's no conflicts with the network sharing portion of it. So I'm gonna go to Cortana and type in control panel. And just so you guys are curious, over here I went from category and I went down to large icons or you can use small icons as well. I like this because it's just easier to find stuff. That's my own personal preference. But anyways, if I go to network and sharing center, let me show you some of my settings. So if you go to change advanced sharing settings, if you go to private up here, I have this turn on, turn on network discovery. I have this checkbox uh, checked, turn on file and printer sharing, allow Windows to manage home group connections. Under guest or public, I have these two options turn on basically. This is on, this is on. And under all networks, I have this is on, 128 bit encryption, and this is off. So that's my setup. If your setup is different, if you play around with it and it works great for you, by all means, go for it. But this is my setup. It works out perfectly fine in terms of what I'm trying to do here. Okay, next thing we want to do is change adapter settings. So go to your Ethernet port, right click, go to properties, and then go to your internet protocol version for TCP IPv4 properties. And over here, say to use following IP address. And this is where you have to be creative and type in what makes sense for your network setup. So in my particular case, I'm just messing around. So I did 192.168.0.123. You could be one dot whatever. It just really depends what you want to do. Subnet mask, 255, 255, 255, zero. And default gateway, you could type in IP address here, but I found that that I don't really have to do it. And it works out okay. So I'm gonna say okay. And that's pretty much it. One thing I do want to note is even though I do have a USB wireless adapter and I have an ethernet port on my computer, I can still connect to my PS2 and not lose my internet access. I don't know why some gamers say they do when they connect to their PS2. I don't really understand that yet. So if you have a, if you understand why that's happening, please let us know because I was not able to recreate that uh, issue. Now to help save some time, I took some pictures of my PS2 uh, TV screen in, in terms of the setup. So let me show you what that looks like. So on your computer, um, you got everything set up, you got everything shared, right? Now, how do you connect it to your PS2? You can use a, a router in between the both devices, a network switch, crossover cable, or you have a newer computer in the last five years or so, you can use a regular ethernet cable and your computer should be able to do the crossover uh, translation itself, which is pretty cool. So you got everything connected from a network standpoint. You turn on your PS2 and you go into OPL 0.993 and here are the settings that you should probably do or follow mine. So under settings here, 
Um, one important thing to note is under the Ethernet device start mode, have it as auto. I found that in the, in the past you do manual, that might give you some issues. So just having it as auto uh, is pretty good. And then just say okay and make sure you save all the settings on, on the resulting home screen. The next picture here is under network config. So here, I think this actually says off. This says auto. And here, make sure you change it to static and then give your IP address of the PS2. So you want to make sure that the first three octets matches your PC IP address. So in my case, my PC was 192.168.0.123. So in the PS2, I call it 192.168.0.10. Mask, 255.255.255.0. Gateway and DNS server, I don't think you can leave those blanks, so I just picked something arbitrary. It doesn't really matter here. Down here on under SMB server, don't forget this. Make sure you change the default setting. Uh, I forget what it's called, but make sure it says IP. Type in your PC's IP address that's hosting all your games. The port can stay the same. Under share, make sure you actually give it an actual share name. So in my particular case, we call it PS2 SMB, which matches the share name on my computer. And then under user, call it guest. And that's why we added the guest permission on my computer. And then just say uh, save or reconnect. And if all goes well, you should be able to be connected to your PS2 and it'll be able to read the games off your computer like this one right here. So here's my ethernet games tab. It saw my game. So if I were to click on this or press X, it'll load the game and you're ready to have a lot of good times. So that's pretty much in a nutshell. Uh, this tutorial is probably a little bit long, but I just want to make sure I go over all the basics again. I try to dumb this down a little bit for newbies because I know that this topic is sort of complicated for whatever reason, even though I've made a lot of other similar network tutorials in the past. So hopefully this helps out. And if you have any tips, by all means, share it in the YouTube comments. Let's talk about it. Let's help everyone out and let's just have a lot of good times. So that's today's video game tutorial. If you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.